Hey there, um, AP Calc students. Today I want to talk about uh, the chain rule, uh, except I want to go the other way of the chain rule. So instead of um, having um, taking the chain rule, taking the derivative, I want to take the integral. All right, so we're going to call this uh, the chain rule. Day two. Relinked. Okay, so I want you to take a look at this integral. Um, the integral of 2 times 3x minus 1 dx. Oops, excuse me. Uh, times 3 dx. Alright, so I want to look at this integral, and I think that this is something that we can probably kind of reason our way through. Um, if we look at um, basically, what function do I take the derivative of that gives me this function? Okay, so let's we want to kind of undo the derivative here. Well, if I think about um, how the derivative works, and I'm looking for f of x. Okay, I think that it really looks like I had something like well, three x minus one on the inside. I think we've got to try to undo the chain rule here. And I think that if we put this two back up here. Um, then I think we probably had something like this. 3x minus 1 squared um, is, I think, what we started with, right? Because if we took the derivative of this, we'd throw the 2 out in front, and then we'd multiply it by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the inside is just 3, right? So I think that we can handle a lot of integrals just by kind of conceptually looking at the, um, looking at the problem and then uh, just kind of undoing uh, the chain rule. So that's the first part of this. Um, let's look at some more examples. So here we are with another example. Uh, actually, uh, unfortunately, it's the same example as before, but let's look at it a little bit differently this time. All right. So before we said, well, we can kind of reason our way to what the the original function may may have been. What? Uh, but this time, let's go at it a little more carefully. When we learned chain rule, we said we're actually taking the derivative of composite functions, function inside of a function. And I'm going to claim here that this is actually a function inside of a function also. So I could call this uh, 3x minus 1. I could call that u. Okay. And if I did that, we've been doing a lot of substituting with u with the chain rule, I think I could rewrite this. 2 times u times 3 dx. And then I could try and integrate that. Now unfortunately, this is the important part, um, I can't integrate u with respect to x. Right? That's a problem. I've got u's and x's, and they just don't get along well together. They're like oil and water, or Republicans and Democrats, or other things that don't go well together. Um, but I think that a little bit of math will make it feel better over here. So let's say we just said that u equals 3x minus 1. Okay. Um, and I'm looking to get rid of that, that dx down here, right? Whoa. Uh, I'm, I'm looking to get rid of this dx. If I can get rid of that, then I win, because I want a du there. Um, to get that du, I think I can take the derivative of u with respect to x up here. Derivative of u with respect to x is just 3, right? And now, we said these, this du dx right here is kind of like a fraction, uh, but not exactly like a fraction. Well, it's enough like a fraction that we can take and move this dx to the other side by multiplying. So then I end up with du equals 3 dx. Okay. Oh, look at this. I now see that I've got dx. Now <laughs> that's kind of a smiley face. I've got dx, uh, 3 dx there, and I've also got 3 dx here. So I think I can make a substitution. So let's do that. The integral of 2u du. Cool. Now that I know that I can take the the antiderivative of 2u, I know that that's u squared. So this function then, f of f of u, is uh, just u squared. Okay. Oh, but remember, we started off in x's, uh, so I better put uh, I better put everything back in x, right? So and since I know that u is 3x minus 1, I can just take and substitute that back in for u. Okay. So f of x then is u squared, but remember we know that u is actually 3x minus 1 squared, and I hope 
fingers crossed on this one, that that's what we ended up with uh, last time when we kind of just reasoned our way through it. Now you say to yourself, why would we even need to know this if we can just reason ourselves through it? Well, stay tuned for the next example, and I'll show you why. Hey, all right, next example. Um, so I've got this, this integral here, and I want to take, uh, take the antiderivative of the function or, or whatever, and I notice that it looks really close um, to being pretty simple, actually. Um, maybe, uh, but with one problem. Uh, if I had a 4 out in front, I think I would be good. If I had something like, and I don't, so don't write this down, but if I had something like 4 times that, then I think I, I could solve this pretty quickly, uh, but I don't. So let's do, uh, let's use one of those, we'll call it a U substitution, and see if that won't help us out here, okay? So this is a composition of functions, a function inside of a function, and I'm gonna claim that this x minus three is gonna be my, is gonna be my U, okay? So if I were to change this, uh, you know, I would, could say, well, the integral of U cubed, kind of like ice cubed, but with it, with the u, I don't know. Okay, uh, times two x dx. Oh, I got u's and x's, and and they're mixing together, and then nothing good can happen there. So I got to get rid of those x's. In fact, usually, usually we shouldn't even do this step. Uh, uh, but since we're amongst friends, uh, I'll show you that. But uh, let's take u, and remember u is x squared plus three, and now I want to take the derivative with respect to u derivative of u with respect to x. So this is du dx equals uh, 2x. And then I said, well, differentials can be kind of moved around, so I can take this dx and move it to the other side, just a little bit of multiplication, and I get du equals 2x dx. Bingo! That's what I wanted, right? I've got 2x dx, 2x dx, and I can make that substitution. I can say, well, take the integral of uh, sorry, take the integral of u cubed uh, du and see what you get. Well, I think we know that that gives us, oh gosh darn it, sorry, that's ugly, sorry. Uh, I think that we know that that gives us u to the fourth, oh, uh, no, f of u equals u to the fourth uh, divided by four. And uh, I think I forgot on the last one, but plus c, right? u to the fourth divided by four plus c. Uh, but remember, we start in x's, we better end in x's. So this is actually f of x equals x we said was x squared plus three. So this is actually x squared plus three over four. We could say one fourth x squared plus three, that's fine too, um, plus c, okay? And, then, and that's it, that's how we would integrate something that doesn't really kind of Bit nicely. Now, some of you guys could have probably reasoned your way to that, um, but I think that I think the u substitution will be helpful and necessary uh, on some examples a little bit later on. Okay, so let's try another one. Hey, again, uh, again. Clearly, I'm pausing between examples. Uh, I apologize if that's incredibly obvious. Um, but let's uh, let's integrate this. I'm going to go through this one a little bit faster to try and keep this video short. You can always rewind uh, and look at the video again, and I think that that's uh, a really good idea. Um, and also make sure you're taking notes, too. Um, all right, so I'm going to look at this one. And I've got a function inside of a function, and this one seems pretty clear to me. I've got this 5 minus 4x inside of a sine function, so I'm going to call that u. All right? Um, so I'm going to go over here to the right, and I'm not going to rewrite it as u with respect to x because it's not really proper. Uh, so I'm going to mess with u on its own here. Uh, u is 5 minus 4x. Okay, and notice um, I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, oh, you know what? We, let's just write it: sine of u du. So I've got a problem with this 4 and the du. And, and maybe I don't have a problem with the 4. I can always take the 4 out in front. Um, but let's let's see what happens when we, when we take du dx over here. So du dx equals negative 4. Okay. And then so du equals negative 4 dx. Okay. Uh, now this is a little problem. Um, uh, you know what's a bigger problem is that I wrote this incorrectly. Uh, that should be dx. Um, but anyway, uh, I've got a little problem because I've got a negative, right? I've got a negative right here, uh, and I don't want there to be a negative. I've got to have a positive 4x dx. 
a positive 4 dx to make that substitution, right? I've got a 4 here and a dx here, and they're both positive. Okay, um, so I think, though, I can get rid of that negative pretty easy if I just kind of move it to the other side. So uh, this is actually going to be dx, oops, sorry, 4 dx, uh, negative du. So when I make this substitution, 4x, uh, the 4x is going to go away, and I'm going to be left with the integral of sine u du, but remember, I'm substituting a negative du in for 4 times dx, so i got to have that negative. Okay. So that negative has to be there. All right. So when I take the uh, antiderivative of sine, that's something that I should be able to, should be able to do. Um, I'm going to get this, uh, f of u f of u, um, let's see, antiderivative of sine is going to be cosine of u, oh, I think negative cosine though, right? The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Uh, and then I've got this negative out here uh, in front, right? Uh, and then, and that's it, I think. Okay, uh, so this is actually just positive cosine of u. And we can check ourselves. If I take the derivative of cosine, do I end up at negative sine? Um, yeah, I do. Um, so that's right. Uh, and then I actually want this as f of x, right? So f of x, if I substitute back in, is cosine of whatever x was, 5 minus 4x. Oh, and don't forget your plus c's at every spot. Let's see. Okay. Um, all right. Last example. Um, let's kind of buzz through this one as quick as possible. Um, full screen, and here we go. Uh, u. Well, I'm not not yelling at you. I'm looking for u first. That's my first uh, thing here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so I think that I'm going to call this five plus two x cubed. I'm going to call that u. All right. Um, so if I call that u. Uh, yeah. How do you choose your u is probably what you're thinking. Um, I'm looking at this as a square root function. And inside of the square root function, I've got a 5 plus 2x cubed. So that's how I chose my u. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say u is 5 plus 2x cubed. And I know at some point I'm going to have to take the derivative of this, so I'm going to do that first. I'm going to say du uh, over dx equals, well, this is just going to be 6x. right? I'm looking to get just du by itself, so this is going to be du equals 6x dx. Oh, 6x squared. Thank you. I'm sure you're all yelling at your computer screen. 6x squared, which is really good because I've got an x squared dx over there, right? Now, uh, the one thing is I can't substitute 6x squared dx in for just an x squared dx, right? So I've got to get the 6 over to the other side. So I'm going to divide by 6, divide by 6, and I think I'll end up with 1 sixth, 1 sixth du equals uh, x squared dx, okay, uh, equals x squared dx. So I'm going to make that substitution now. And when all is said and done in here, I think I'm going to get the square root of, in fact, let's raise it to the 1 half, uh, this u raised to the 1 half, okay, uh, du, and then I'm multiplying by 1 6, so I'm just going to kick this 1 6 out in front here. I'm not even going to mess with it. Uh, yet, okay? So when I integrate this, I think my rule is add 1 to the power and divide by whatever that is, okay? So let's think of this. Uh, let's see. I've got 1 sixth, sorry, f of u equals 1 sixth, and then add 1 to the power. That's 3 halves. So u to the 3 halves, okay? And then divide by the power. Okay, divide. if I'm dividing by 3 over 2, I think that's the same as multiplying by 2 over 3. Okay, so I'm just going to multiply by 2 over 3. Once again, divide by 3 over 2, I believe is the same as multiplying by 2 over 3. Okay, um, and that's it. That's the integral of that thing, uh, but we better add that C on, right? Um, okay, so now let's uh, clean this up a little bit. F of X, then, is going to be 1 6th, I'm sorry, 
simplify that even. How about 2 over 3 times 6, 2 over 18, maybe 1 ninth? 1 ninth, u to the 3 halves, but u is actually 5 plus 2x cubed. Okay, so 5 plus 2x cubed, and then that quantity to the 3 halves, um, all plus plus c. And I could verify that. I could, I could certainly take the derivative of that, uh, and I think that I would end up at, uh, hopefully, x squared times the root of 5 plus 2x cubed. And that's it for um, kind of undoing the, ch the chain rule. Uh, what, do we, what do we say? Relinked. The chain rule relinked. Okay. Thanks for taking my class.